Hey there, School of Tomorrow. I'm going to do this one as a part two to the last one, and it's going to be like an erratum. I'm going to do like a sandwich. So I'm going to start where I left off with the same Python that we had before, kind of, but I'm going to do a run it again because I'm wanting to keep you with me if you're skeptical that you care at all about Python. I want you to stick with me and so I don't want to shake you loose with a bunch of you know intimidating fancy footwork or anything I'm gonna talk about mistakes I think I've made uh, small ones and technical one so that's gonna be elucidating right going and looking at a mistake and then, then I'm gonna sandwich out and talk about what I used at the beginning of the last video which was uh, Apple White Wanderers. Now I'm going to come out through Apple White. I think pinning down the day he died, I didn't quite get it right. So two two mistakes to focus on. So let's look at Spider here. What we're <clears throat> staring at on the left side, in case you're new to this whole thing, is um, like a blueprint, they always say. It's a little bit misleading, that analogy of blueprint, but yeah, it's a pattern of any tetrahedron, and all tetrahedron, you know, is a shape with four corners, and we're going to store the four corners, and the corners themselves are interesting objects that I could go on and on about. They're called Q-vector type, and it's a kind of a, just um, think of a vector, which is just an arrow, right, pointing in space, with its tail stuck at the origin the way we'll do it okay and then so it's just like a clock hand but it's free from the plane of the clock and maybe it's on tracks maybe it's not entirely free maybe it's free to swivel along certain great circles pre-mapped out like a telescope it can't go quote anywhere it can go anywhere on the track now I'm not saying this is how any telescope actually is with gears and so on, you know, you want to be able to point very, very accurately. <clears throat> Not that I'm Mr. Telescope any anytime soon, but respect for the instrument, microscope also. And those aren't just, you know, when I say telescope and microscope, there are many technologies that fit into each of those categories that operate on different principles, like there's electron tunneling microscopy, and um, so much to do with lasers. Anyway, left side we've got source code, right side we've got Python 5. Now this is a little more crowded than you'd see on GitHub, but what we're looking at is mirrored in the cloud, so it's a little bit relevant and that you could grab a lot of this for yourself. And then the IPython console the IPython console is where we're going to spend our time, and I'm going to fix my mistake. And it was about Dunder Dict, in case you want to know looking ahead. I haven't run anything yet, so clean, empty namespace. Now I run it with the green arrow. There are unit tests. Every time you see this, that's a telltale sign that somewhere on the uh, source code side down here, I'm actually building up unit tests right in the same <clears throat> module. And that's what we're going to do to, I think we should fix our mistake here, maybe. If there's no, let me think about that. That wasn't my plan, so I'm going to just stick to my <clears throat> my sort of idea of what I want to talk about. So now the namespace, like how I want to show my mistake, basically. The namespace is bigger now, right? <clears throat> I just did DIR again. And there's all this stuff. <clears throat> there's the tetrahedron. And that's what we've been using. You'll notice, you could call it a mistake at the very end of the last video. I wanted to show you, right, what this does, by the way, is not only does it record the four corners of the tetrahedron in space, but it's immediately willing to cough up any interdistance between any two of those corners. Just tell you what the length is as a number. And it's, it doesn't take the, you can't tell it the length. It's a read-only thing. You can ask about the length. Really, the only thing this suggests changing, I would say, and I can write more methods to make changing a more formal process, but you can always swap out a vertex for a different one in this picture. You know, find a different 
uh, you're basically creating a new tetrahedron when you do that. So you might just go ahead and do that, right? Don't ever change. Once you've created a tetrahedron instance in this universe here, you'll never change it. You'll just throw it away. You won't ever need a, a copy. Let's create some rules for ourselves. Why not? Now, the scoping issues. I have another program or two just focused on scoping rules in Python, but I'm not going to get into that so deeply. There's keywords global and non-local to know about. Yeah, so in the last one, I never did bother to change the floating point interconversion constant. You know how in Synergetics here we have our unit of volume. We can subdivide it. There's pre-frequency and the concentric hierarchy. And I've been going around the world sharing this a little bit. You've seen in my channel recently a Bhutanese mathematical curriculum or mathematics curriculum, something like this, laser printed work. I taught live in Lesotho a little bit. I'm not bragging that I did a huge amount in any of these places, but that I were was in these places, that's that's true. And South Africa spent quite a bit of time there. Shout out to a great place. I look up to South Africa, I want you to know, for a lot of reasons. I'm not saying we can't learn from each other. All right, so scrolling on down. What my mistake was is, let's see, in running all that, okay, yeah, so back to this story. I, I never did uh, change it out of just being floating point. And therefore, when I asked for the XYZ volume, and I'll do that again, I'll make this kind of a mistake. I wasn't planning to, but call this a mistake. Uh, it, it does, you know, it, it doesn't have so much precision on S3. And so the final thing that comes out, you can see clearly, is kind of bogus. We lost, for those just joining us, we had a thousand bits of precision for each of our numbers. We weren't using just floating points, which are limited in, you know, how precise they can be. We're using a in, in the last video, but I'm not going to bother with all that right now. Not going to bother with all that. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to create a tetrahedron. Uh, let's see. Do we want a random tetrahedron like from last time? Yeah, let's do. Let's go files. T, tetravert, tetravolume. Where were they? Tet balls, rand, R, R. R, R, R. You're going to have this if you want it. It's on GitHub. Right? It's all there. Gimpy, I don't know if it's the source code. You may, you may need to get that off, um, off the, uh, out of the cloud yourself. Gimpy2 here. I don't think I'm giving you that in my uh, Python 5. I assume you can install it, right? Okay, so yeah, let's run this first like we did last time. And so now I have this A, B, C, and D which are these random points in space, right? You will want to watch the last video, I think, since this is a correction, right? And then I created a tetrahedron from, remember, we can record the positions. Let's go back to the top of the source code of the other guy. I'm going to initialize a tetrahedron now, and that's going to fire off this code. So keep your eye on the right side and the left side tetrahedron, and I'm going to feed in four points in space. Think of those arrows, think of that clock, freed from its plane, swiveling about, pointing anywhere, and it's got four corners, and so T has just been created, and here was my mistake. I said that the lengths would be fished out of Dunderdict. I flashed on that, and I said that's where we would keep the lengths between the four points, six edges. Well, that actually worked. Interesting. So Dunderdict does pull up. No, it just pulls up A, B, C, D, of course. The links are not there. No, the links are not there. So you don't fish the links out of Dunderdict, and yet you can ask for T, what's the length A, B? What's the length AC? Now, see, these are those giant numbers I was talking about. 
not floating point. In case that confused you, look how many digits there are for these different lengths, right? That's what I mean when I say these are like super, super duper numbers in a certain dimension. And then that dimension of precision, right? Now it's not just Python or something that has this type. You know, Mathematica takes this for granted that you've got like this kind of stuff. So we have to, we somewhat like don't take it for granted in Python. So when we do have it, it's kind of like, oh, wow, look at this. And see what I don't do. Now when I ask for the volume of this thing, what I don't do is change S3, which is a constant, to convert between XYZ and IBM volumes, you could call it, right? Two different ways of doing volume, as I've been talking about. So when I ask for TXYZ volume, it doesn't look right. It's got messy digits, which it should keep having all the way to the end, but it goes to all zeros. And that's because it's multiplying a very high precision number by a very low precision number of floating point. And so it's kind of freaking. It's giving us a kind of a, a worthless result. We're like taking up too much room for precision we don't have. Like it's just assuming this number is precise to a thousand bits. It's converting that, it's making that, it's upgrading it to a full arbitrary precision GIMPy2 number of type MPFR. It's doing that for you. But that's really not what S3 is. I should put it that way. S3 being the second root of 9 eighths is not going to be that simple. So yeah, I could just convert this at, at runtime to, I mean, I should convert this. I could do that in another video. Or should I do that right now? Let's do that right now. Just one more, one more exercise here. So power of nine eights, it'll be sufficient to just say S3 equals, now to get a GIMPy2 number here, we can just do MPFR. See, we don't have GIMPy2, that's why this hasn't worked. From GIMPy2, import MPFR. Okay. And then MPFR, I think we can just put in 9 eighths right here and go ahead and raise it to the 0.5 power. And I think we'll have all we need. I think it's that simple. So let's rerun this. Okay, it doesn't work that way. MPFR over MPFR8. Try, you know, make sure we've got that all right. And run it again. Okay, worked good. S3 is now that. Okay, so that should be correct. So when I do get the XYZ volume, let's do that again, A, B, C, D, the uh, IVM volume, got it, 5799, and the XYZ volume, okay, that, that would fix it, right? Okay, so, and is there a dunderdict? And what's in it? What's in it is just A, B, C, D, but we can still consult the properties that all the links act like they're there. It's just what? Because of the property decorator, they compute on the fly at the time. My other error, so coming out and looking at this picture of Ed Applewhite in my... Um, at my website. We were looking at this last time. Got mail to that address. So let's go to that uh, page, actual page, and pull that up. And I think that 
he actually died on the 14th. Am I right about that? Because I've read this quite a few times. Link to post archive. So is the Washington Post still got the link? Yes, it does. Died February 10th. Okay, not 14th, 10th. So very close to um, when I last was in touch, I think. All right. So this was in connection, for those of you joining us, with the collaborator on Synergetics, um, E.J. Applewhite. Now, Synergetics is what I've been suggesting you categorize in your mind as an extension of American transcendentalism that uh, grew out of Emerson and Unitarianism to some degree and spread like wildfire and had kind of an arc. And then I talked about an earlier Quaker arc and we were doing religious like church history all of a sudden and talking about Bucky. And that's what we always talk about on this channel, right? And so that's a unifying theme. And you see how I use it to create kind of an interesting curriculum ball of interconnected concepts. So I'll end up with like, Here's my YouTube's history. So I sleep through a lot of these, as I said. I think I woke up to the Tesla day. And I'm watching all that. It's like Bucky Fuller wanted to be like the Elon Musk of the futuristic aerospace house. But we're thinking, we're already used to cars that go kind of into the future. We've been trained to think how cars evolve. But houses, they're just supposed to always be like cute cottage with the picket fence. So we're not used to the idea that houses could actually morph into these more like yurts. And if, you know, in my parallel civilization, our time working in Afghanistan together with the yurt people was going to be, you know, it would be further along probably if people weren't keeping this education out of it. So it'd be interesting to have a science fiction series where we had not sidelined as much some of this material, right? So I'm, I'm interested in shoe on head channel these days, learning a lot and looking, always looking for talented teachers here and always finding an abundance of talented teachers. So I enjoy being a student in the school of tomorrow as well as a teacher sometimes. Talk to you in the near future.